Hey everybody, welcome to Crime on the Record. I'm Jason, she's Candace, and we have some updates. And damn, it's been a long time since we've actually done one of these together. Yeah, I was going to say it hasn't been a long time for me, but it's been a long time for you. <laughs> uh, I put something out last week, I think it was, but oh. it's been a while since we've been on here together. But, I mean, That's probably why reason. our intro sounds like trash. Because <laughs> it never it's, sounds the same. Yeah, but it's simple. We're like, you know who we are. And if you don't, now you do. I mean, I have a whole intro, but apparently you do. Nobody, but nobody said it was good. <laughs> like you just have one. That's true. They didn't say that. <laughs> so we do have a couple of updates. I'm sure if you are any a kind lot. of true crime fan, you know, other than me, you know what's going on. Um, I will have to say thank you to Rhett Mom on our Discord because we were not tracking this at all. Um, we were. Engaged in other things. And by other things, I mean like fantasy football and, and other stuff. But um, <laughs> yeah. so, but the same day around, I mean, it, updates on Suzanne Morphew and Crystal Rogers. And if you guys have listened to us any amount of time, you know that I am not um, well versed in the true crime world. So I had no idea what was going on with the Crystal Rogers case um, until now. So Candace is going to tell you about that one. I'm going to go over. Uh, Suzanne Morphew, because I, I did the, the episode on it. It's almost a year ago that I did that thing. Um, it's been that long. So, yeah. So, it is kind of crazy um, to think that yesterday they announced that the search for Suzanne Morphew, who went missing in Colorado on Mother's Day in 2020, she has been found. Her remains were found, which it's surprising because I mean, once it's been so many years, it's just, it's always shocking to me when they actually find someone or make any kind of developments, which is what's crazy about this case and Crystal Rogers one. Yeah. So it was about three years ago, they found her bike, but they couldn't locate her and her husband was kind of sketchy according to the, the, <laughs> <Kinda>. <laughs> the, the stuff that we we're seeing. But you know, over the last three years, law enforcement continued to investigate, which is also kind of shocking because it's some of these cases you feel like they're just not doing anything. And maybe they are. Maybe they just got lucky or something. But what's crazy is they weren't even looking for Suzanne when they found her. That's nuts to me. I mean, yeah. that's that's happened so many times. And every time it happens, it's like, seriously? Yeah. That how like how many bodies are just laying around? Like, are there bodies in our neighborhood we don't know about? I mean, it, it is it know. is it is kind of scary to think because like we'll get into it in just a minute, but she was found in Moffitt, Colorado, which is about 50 miles south of where Suzanne was reporting missing. So like in Maysville, Colorado, it's, a, it's about 50 miles south of that. Um, and with Barry he said that he left for a job in Boulder, Colorado, the day she went missing. So he left like super early in the morning and he went up to Boulder to do a job for his construction or landscape or whatever the guy does. So, <laughs> but so Moffitt is about 45 minutes South Boulder is about three and a half hours North. So that's opposite, but I don't know exactly what the timeline is on his movement movements specifically. I know where he was and where he went, but I don't know the in-between stuff. So, I mean... Yeah, plus, he, what if he hit her one place and then took her or something? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, he had plenty of time. And, and I, I think we need to make sure that we say this. He is not charged with anything at this time. So... Um, allegedly. No, no, not that's not allegedly. That's that's fact. That no, I'm, not, I'm just uh, saying, like, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no I charged. just meant... I just meant we should say allegedly, you know. Yeah, when we yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. It. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. So, but so the question is, is like, could he have gone there to Boulder? But they weren't even. This is the thing that blows my. They weren't even looking for her. <laughs> no. So there's some there's some stuff that we heard, and and somebody told us about this that they saw on a Facebook group that they're saying it possibly could have been they were looking. for for somebody else in relation to a serial killer, which is I also kind of like, I, I don't know. Because the thing about it is, is like if Barry is innocent and the serial killer rumor is just, it, it's not a real thing. Who did it? I mean, yeah, I, you know, so it's like, I, I don't know. 
it's 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 wild that they're looking for somebody else unrelated almost an hour away and they find her and i guess they found her a few weeks ago they were just waiting for confirmation that it was her and that's so why they, they did they find another body not that i know of i don't think they did gotcha. i think they just happened to be looking for one and found her and i mean like if you're an investigator law enforcement or whatever and, and you're searching for somebody and you find remains obviously it's it's been three years so it's going to be extremely difficult to even tell gender at that point so i'm sure you yeah. can't even tell who it is so can you imagine thinking that you found the person you were originally looking for and then it happened to be somebody completely different on this cold oh case gosh. from three years ago <laughs> what no i mean they had to have what? been shocked yeah because barry was arrested in 2021 and then the da's office it took them an entire year and like i think it was like 10 days before they were about to start the trial, they dismissed the case because I don't know if they felt like they didn't have enough or whatever. So they dismissed the case, but it was dismissed without prejudice. So that means they can come back. And if they do find evidence that he did it, then they can charge him again for that. But in the meantime, his attorney has filed a $15 million uh, lawsuit against the DA's office for violation of his constitutional rights. Because, I mean, it is a long time to be, you know, out and waiting for trial. And then right before it, you drop the charges. I don't know. That seems kind of. Yeah. I don't know. It seems like maybe they were, they jumped the gun a little bit on, on that. So, but Barry's attorney said yesterday that Barry is with his daughters and they are all struggling with immense shock and grief after learning today that their mother and wife, whom they deeply love, was found deceased. And he went on to say that they had faith that their wife and mom would walk back into their lives again. And the news is heartbreaking. Like, I don't know, but like if I, if I believe that Barry didn't do it. Yeah, I get that. That is, that is absolutely heartbreaking and everything. Um, if we believe that he did do it, I could see it being very upsetting for his daughters because now they're, they're kind of fighting with the, you know, they've, they've supported him the entire time. But, I mean, I think they still do. Yeah, yeah, but you know, there's got to be a little doubt. I mean, there's, there, I mean, that's just normal. I mean, but no I mean, you... what does this change though about whether or not you believe he did it? Because well, yeah, we all know she was out there somewhere. Yeah, I mean, the only thing for me, anyway, and like we said, he is not charged with anything, and he, every time we talk about him, it's all alleged and whatever. But for me, if it, if it doesn't show that somebody else did it. I think it's just more evidence or proof, whether it be something you can completely prove, but it, it seems like it's more, it's him because it's way too close, you know, yeah. and, and I could see somebody driving an hour South and then driving back North and thinking, Oh, they'll never catch me because I was in Boulder, but I don't know. But yeah, really? yeah, law enforcement said, obviously, they couldn't comment on the ongoing investigation, whether it be Suzanne's case or the other case that they were in in Moffat for originally. But they said that we have never stopped our investigation and will continue to follow all leads in pursuit of justice for Suzanne. Uh, the DA's office did say that there would be an update in the coming weeks. Who knows how long that is? Two, three, 12. Yeah. Who knows how many weeks that'll be? Um, but I'm, I'm interested to see what really happened because like I said, if it's not Barry and it's not this rumored serial killer, then you just got some other random guy out in this little bitty city, this little yeah. town in Colorado that just snatched her and then took her. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, yeah, it just, you know, I'm skeptical of a lot of things, but um, I mean, she's but, not the only person that would have been snatched off a bike while out riding. I mean, that is true. I mean, it's it's scary. I was doing research for another case, and I saw that, like, there's, I mean, however many thousands and thousands of people go missing every year, and just hundreds of thousands of unsolved cases. Mm -hmm. When you read that stuff, I'm like, how do they solve anything? That's like, right. that, that's like any kind of, like, any, any yeah. bit of mystery. How do they, how do they solve it? I mean, especially yeah. after it's been this long and nobody talks. That's just, it's and just like insane. when we watch like the first 48 and they're like, well, we've come to the end. We don't got any more leads. And you're like, so that's it. You're just yeah. like, F it. 
next yeah. case. I mean, yeah. you wonder if those ever get solved. Yeah, I mean, it is it is wild. Um, but hopefully with with them finding her, it'll give a little bit of closure on for the girls for where their mom is and, and being able to, you know, proper properly bury her. And then depending on Barry's guilt or innocence, it's got to be a scary, scary time for him. Yeah. I mean, even if he is innocent. Yeah. If it was me, I would still be nervous because it's like, okay, you guys tried to convict more. You know, you, you arrested me once. And then, you know, you drop the charges and now they found her. If I'm innocent, I'm still scared. Because, mm. I mean, I'm the <laughs> he's going to be the one they look at first. I'd be on a plane, man. My ass would have been gone already. <laughs> I'd have, I'd have been I'm gone. not staying around here waiting for you to arrest yeah. me. Oh, yeah. I, I'd have yeah. been gone in 2020. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I feel really bad for his daughters because what's going to happen? They've supported him this entire time. What happens if he is found guilty? Like, what happens if they found something on her body that completely shows he did it and they can prove it? That's yeah. going to crush those girls. It, it is. It is. And, I mean, it is. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know what to say to that. Because it will. It would absolutely crush them. And if they, yeah. even if they convicted him and it wasn't something where everybody was 100% sure it was him, they're still going to go back and forth on mm -hmm. did he do it, did he not do it. So, I mean, they're in a bad spot. Yeah, they really that. are. Yeah. But I am interested in what you guys think. So if you're listening or watching on YouTube, throw a comment down there and let us know what you think. Or if you are listening on our podcast, throw something out there on social media. We are on Instagram and X, which I, I don't know. Oh, it's ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous. But I refuse to call it that. It's Twitter. <laughs> We're on Twitter. It's okay. For, yeah. X formally Twitter. Um, at, <laughs> yeah, we're at crime on record. So we want to hear what you guys think. Like, what do, what do you think happened? Do you think it's Barry? Do you think it's this rumored serial, serial killer? Do you think it's something else? If you think it's something else, let us know. Cause I'm very interested as to what people think. What do you think now? I mean, it's probably a rumor with this whole serial killer thing, but I want to see if anything materializes from that. But if not, I mean, it's kind of hard to to believe it's not the husband. Yeah, I mean, it, it just, I, I it just is. I mean. Yeah. and I mean, and and I mean, I'm I'm not big on it's always the husband. It's always the, I mean, it usually is, but it's not always the husband. Yeah. But but kind of what I go back to is it's such a small city. It's not a city. It's a town. It's 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 a congregation of a few houses. I mean, it's such <laughs> a small place that it's hard for me to think that there's just another dude just out there snatching people in such a small, small yeah. place. I mean, it, it, not to say that couldn't happen, but it's just, it's just hard to think that that's what it is. So I don't know. I, I'm, I'm like 12% serial killer, 1% somebody else and the rest may be him. So <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm not, I'm not sold on anything, but it wouldn't take much to persuade me. So if they had found another body, I would think serial yeah. killer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But they yeah. didn't yeah. find any, yeah. anything. It and just makes me wonder what led them out there to find a body. Because they found one. Not the one they're yeah. looking for, yeah. but they found I one. I don't know. And, and I do want to make sure everybody uh, that I reiterate this, that the rumor serial killer thing was on comments on a Facebook page specifically for Suzanne's case. So yeah. take that for what it is. But. Yeah, don't be like we listened to Crime on the Record and they said there's a serial killer because that is not what we're saying. Definitely like, not. Definitely let's not run with that, okay? Yeah. But when more stuff comes out, we will let you know. Or once more stuff comes out, somebody on our Discord tells us, we'll let you know. So, and our people yeah. are on it, you they know, are. and even. They are. With everything that we've had going on and not being able to put out as many episodes, like they still are around. Yeah. I mean, they're awesome. They're like, well, we'll just listen to you when you decide to do something. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yep. They're yeah. great. So. so that's it. If we have anything else on that, we'll definitely bring it to you. So tell us about Crystal. Well, first of all, I don't know why I keep yawning. I cannot stop yawning today. I don't know. You slept till 1130. I know. Like, maybe that's why. Maybe I slept 11, too late. Like you're a damn teenager. 1130. And it's 
not even 3.30. I am even up four hours. <laughs> and I am right, so right, tired. Right, yeah. And I have ADHD and took Adderall, people. So, I mean, if you can sleep on Adderall, you clearly got ADHD. So, that's all I'm saying. Or something else. Like, I you got, got some problems. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm still yawning. You got okay. all the stuff. Yeah. I do. I got all the stuff. <laughs> so, okay. I know Suzanne Morphy finding her was crazy. The craziest, craziest, craziest part to me is that in the same time frame, we hear about an arrest on Crystal Rogers' case. Now, I know you don't really know the case, but... And by really, I don't know anything about it. I mean, I, honest to God, thought that it was like, like I'm, I was thinking, like, they're never going to arrest anybody for this. I was I shocked. Mean, it's been, what, eight years? Yeah. Yeah. And they haven't found her, right? Not to my knowledge. Okay, yeah. However, they had found some remains that I remember seeing that they still had not declared whether or not it was her, but I haven't seen anything since. And when I tried to look it up today, writing this up, I couldn't find anything where they had said one way or the other. So I don't know if the FBI is still just not telling whether or not they found remains, but it makes you wonder, you know, if they, they found something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they absolutely found something. So, okay. So first of all, for anybody who doesn't know the case, um, she went missing in 2015. So 35 years old, five kids. Now she had four kids prior to getting into a relationship with Brooks Houck. And then they had a child together. So at the time she went missing, their child was two. And then she had the other four. So he says that he went to bed one night and she was sitting on the couch playing on her phone. I mean, that sounds reasonable. <laughs> I'm on the couch on my phone playing games like every night. Yeah. So far, that's reasonable. I have a feeling yeah. that's about as far as reasonable goes. Mm, yeah. So he says that. Well, then like the next day, where the hell's Crystal? You know, day after that, where the hell's Crystal? Brooks don't seem to care. He's just like, I don't know. Woke up. She wasn't here. Like, like dude does not even seem to give a crap. It's crazy. So then two days later, her car is found abandoned on the Bluegrass Parkway. So this is Bardstown, Kentucky. I don't know if y'all know Bluegrass Parkway. I do not. Apparently, it's like a big, you know, like the main parkway or something. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. It's it's not a street that you just pull over on the side of the road. No. Right? I mean, no, from what I, what I was saying last night, you know, because no. I watched a little bit on that documentary last night until I felt like she was exploiting the family more than really trying to tell the story. I know. That's how I the felt. sad thing so. is you felt like that, but that's like the only one that really tells everything. So as crappy as it is to catch you up on the case, I was like, you might just have to watch these episodes. Too. No, I'll, I'd rather read something than watch somebody who's like trying to benefit off of something. But, true. True. Yeah. But, but, but at the way. same time, you don't know because she might just be trying to hop it up. I mean, I'm just saying as someone who owns a business, like a lot of times you have to almost like sound like a fool to sell yourself just so you get, okay, not yourself, but you know what I mean? Like yeah. you're not yeah. trying to exploit anything. It's just like, if, if nobody's coming to watch it, nobody's going to hear about it. Yeah. So. No, that's, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. And I'm sure some people think that every single person that does something on YouTube or podcast on true crime is out for their own benefit somehow. So well, I, let get, me tell I, you, get I get it. I'm not going to get on a soapbox <laughs> about this, but here's the thing. Y'all out there bitching about, true crime and stuff. But if we don't put some kind of catchy thumbnail, ain't nobody listening to it. Mm -hmm. So who's really acting a fool us or the people listening to it? I'm just saying, because we try to cover cases and it's cases that you're like, Oh my God, we've got to get this out there. You know, they, they haven't been able to find out anything about this person. They're missing. People re really need to know, but you put it out there. And unless you got some flashy ass thumbnail, you get like five, <laughs> views and it's not about we want more views it's nobody's hearing about it so we just told five people well that ain't I mean, gonna solve the case technically we do want more views but for the well, for the right yeah reasons, but we want for you the to right reasons yeah yeah so, so okay 
Soapbox. Awesome soapbox. Over. <laughs> okay. So again, two days later, they find the car on the Bluegrass Parkway. So the keys are in the ignition and her cell phone and purse are inside. Hmm. Now it has a flat tire. So, you know, I guess the thought process was, oh, she had a flat. So she got out. Uh, why you don't take your purse or your phone? You have a flat, you call somebody. Yeah, and and the I got a little bit into that documentary, and I don't remember if it was her brother or a family member or something that said that on that same parkway, at one point she had a flat tire and she refused to stop on there and actually destroyed the rim before she oh, could wow. find. Yeah, I that's what he was saying. That. Yeah, yeah, he was saying that she destroyed the rim before she felt like she was in a place where she could pull over safely. Dang. So, and he was saying that the tire wasn't flat. It was low. Yeah. The air was mm -hmm. low on the tire. So almost like maybe it was going flat or like somebody deflated it a little bit, but, but this well, that's also, what they report that it looked yeah. to be deflated. Well, but he, he went on to say that he doesn't think she drove it there. I don't either. I don't either. I mean, which makes, <laughs> I mean, like I you think said, somebody drove it there and let some of the air out. Yep. Cause who leaves, like you said, even if the keys and the phone were left or the keys and the purse were left in there, if her phone was taken, okay, maybe I could see, maybe she did leave, but you leave the phone there. Nah, no, nah. <laughs> she, mm -hmm. she either didn't drive the car there or she wasn't alive when, when the car got there. Cause there's no way she leaves without her phone. No way. And here's another thing too. Like, I don't know how Crystal would have thought, but you know, it was 4th of July weekend. So if I'm out in the middle of the night, leading up to 4th of July, because she went missing on, you know, July 3rd into July 4th. All I'm going to be thinking is I can't pull over here because what if some drunk person hits me, people out partying for the 4th yeah. of July? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, we have genius people around here that are like doing fireworks the weekend. This is like a whole week before 4th of July. They're already drunk doing fireworks. Yeah. And we're talking, we're talking a small town in Kentucky. So there are a lot of rednecks mm. hanging out there because for we sure. got them here. <laughs> So, I mean, I mean, for sure. Yeah. And you yeah. know how pissed off I'd be at you if you pulled over right there? Oh, the my God. I know. Oh, I know. I'd lose my mind. I know. Yeah. So I'm with you. I think somebody took the car there and staged it to look like a flat tire. Mm -hmm. The dumbass thing is taking, not taking her purse or the keys or the phone. What would have been well, smart would have been to lock the car and leave it because then it would have looked like maybe she did walk to try to get help or, call, you know, got somebody to pick her up or something. Mm -hmm. And I understand maybe not taking the phone because then you couldn't track it anywhere, but I would probably take it and then discard it somewhere. Yeah. But yeah, but you leave everything there. It just screams. She, she didn't leave there by herself. Right. Yeah. And what woman is going to leave her phone in her purse and the keys. Even if you're like, well, they can't take the car. My, I mean, it doesn't matter if I leave the keys. There ain't nobody stealing it and driving it anywhere. Okay, so you leave the keys. But why would you leave your phone and your part? One, for one, you don't even got to leave the phone. Yeah, you right, got to leave yeah. the car. Yeah, you, you just, just use that. your phone to call somebody. So it's nuts. And when this happens around this time, the same day, mom, Sherry, um, Sherry Ballard, her mom, is the one who called and made the missing persons report. So, like, Brooks wakes up. She's not home. Days go by. Nothing. He ain't even making a police report. Look, I'm going to tell you right now, like, not, not being funny, but if I woke up and you were gone and I didn't know where you were and I got five kids to take care of myself, no, nah, I'm blowing your phone up. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm just saying like i'm not that's doing, true like, that's true like, there, like it wouldn't it just wouldn't make sense to me that you would leave mm -hmm. i mean it yeah. doesn't make sense to me that you would leave if we didn't have kids much yeah. less if we got one or five so mm -hmm. i mean you so this is one of those times where unless you proved to me it was somebody else he definitely did it like because oh. you, like those mm -hmm. things you you don't you don't you don't leave your kids at home and that's what her mom was saying too like she's not going to just leave and not not talk to her kids or her mom no. I mean, his family was tight yeah I mean, they, they absolutely were. Um, let's see. Let's see. So, okay. So all this happens. They call Brooks in. They talk to him. He absolutely sounds like he's lying in my opinion. I mean, y'all go out there and find the YouTube video of his police interview. But I I listened to it again because, you know, recently this, was it Joseph Lawson? Is that his first name, Joseph? 
I think sure. Lawson. <laughs> sure. Okay, so he's arrested like a couple weeks ago or whatever. They arrest him, and everybody's like, what the hell connection could he possibly have to this? Well, then you go back and listen to um, Brooks's interview with the police, and one of the things they ask him is, who is Steve Lawson? And he says that he works for me. And it turns out he's a drywaller that works for him because, you know, he does construction. Hmm. So they ask him, why were you talking to Steve so late on the phone the night that she went missing? And in, he says he can't remember. So in the interview, they have him on speakerphone call Steve and he's like, Hey, you know, uh, I'm here down here at the police station, you know, like trying to give him a heads up, Mm -hmm. I'm guessing. And he says, you know, I can't remember. What did you call me for the other night? so late I I can't really remember and he said oh remember I had a a question for Crystal and then apparently he said he would get Crystal to call back and the police officer's like well why would you need to get Crystal why would you need to ask her and then call him back to answer him if she was supposed to be with you up until you went to bed yeah I was gonna say wasn't she on her phone already right what the hell and and so I guess the story is this guy called and woke him up because he said he was in bed, right? I guess. I mean, there's issues here already. Okay. There's a lot of stuff. Yeah, there's okay. a lot of stuff. Well, they keep saying late at night, but he's saying, you know, he went to bed, like he saw her and then went to bed. But when the cop asked him, he's like, wasn't she next to you in the truck? So they're acting like they had not gotten home yet. Like they went somewhere. I can't remember where it was. He said they went that night. It's like to some property that they have to check on something. And then they came back to the house and he went to bed and she was on the couch playing on her phone. Um, But apparently during this car ride they were in, this dude calls and it's already late. You know, one, why are you going to have your two uh, two year old out that late? Ain't nobody with two year old trying to go out. (laughs) In the middle of the damn night. The, the only time you go out with your kid that late is if they won't sleep and you're trying to put yeah. them to sleep. Yeah. Like yeah. you, if they go to sleep, if a two-year-old goes to sleep, you leave them the hell alone. Everything stops. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. do nothing. Yeah. So, you know, first of all, it sounds sketchy that he'd be out with this baby in the middle of the night. That either one of them would be out. But then to know that he gets this phone call from this Steve guy at the time they're supposed to be out. And says, oh, I'll have Crystal call you back. Yeah. I thought she was in the truck beside you. What the hell? It just makes no sense. Like, he just keeps fumbling over his story. It makes no sense. It sounds like one of those things where the police are like, we know you're lying. We just don't have a way to prove that. hmm Yeah. Yeah. Because you so, know when something's bullshit. I yeah. Mean, let's be, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for anybody who doesn't, again, doesn't know the case, and you, you know, because you don't know anything. Um, <laughs> right, yeah. So yeah, his fair. brother, he has a brother named Nick Howe. And Nick worked for Bardstown as a police officer. Now, if you're a police officer, and you know the law, and you want your, by all accounts, you're basically your sister-in-law. I mean, they weren't married, but they had a child together. They lived together. They've been living together for a long time. I mean, might Essentially, well your sister-in-law. Yeah, yeah. You know she's missing, and you want her to be found. Why would you come into the... First of all, why the hell they let him in there with the interrogation, or let him talk to him, or anything? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But his brother... I think the brother, if I remember correctly, he calls during it, and he's talking to him in the phone, and Nick tells him, stop talking. Don't say anything else to them. Now, why would another police officer at that department tell you to stop talking if you're trying to find her? I mean, me personally, that's exactly what I would tell somebody because I mean, I I've, mean said it, I I've said it a lot of times. That's true. No, I'm not talking without an attorney. No, you can't have my DNA. No way in hell I'm doing a polygraph, but yeah, I mean, it is kind of, it is, it is weird. It's always suspicious when people are like, don't talk, but Especially if she's missing. Like, that has yeah. a more of a sense of urgency. It would be like, yeah. dude, just tell him whatever so we can figure out where she's at. Like, yeah. But, like, but also, if you're in law, let me get you a lawyer or get a lawyer or something, not just shut up, don't talk. Well, because the first thing, I don't know, I guess because we watch all this stuff, they immediately try and lock you into a story 
about what yeah. happened. And then they pick it apart and you tell a lie because you the initial one was a lie. So I can understand why I was like, don't say anything. But at the same time, if it's your sister-in-law and you don't think that this guy could have done anything, why aren't you like, look, we need to find her. Tell him everything you know. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm on both sides of this. Yeah. I mean, I guess yeah. I get what you're saying. I guess I was thinking of it from a sense of urgency of like, dude. but I don't know. Just, it just seems so sketchy, you know? So, and That's they the obviously answer. thought so too, because they call Nick in to question him and they keep on him. And eventually he agrees to do a polygraph test. So he does this polygraph. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know how you feel about him, whatever. <laughs> but, never do him so more. the brother does a polygraph test. And when he's done, the polygrapher calls um, over to the police department and tells them, you know, um, these are some very concerning results. Like, there's an issue here. Okay. And Nick gets fired. So he's gone. He ain't caught no more. Like, they, Well, I mean, out. makes sense. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, but it just says the results of the test led to his dismissal. I mean, I don't really know, like, how, how though, from, like, a legal standpoint, do you say, well, you look a little sketchy, so peace out. Like, we're going to fire you. I'm not quite <laughs> sure how they legally fired him. I don't know. Well, there may be something in that, you know, when he became a police officer, there may be something yeah. in the stuff that you sign or the oath that you take or whatever that basically says, look, if you, if you essentially try and obstruct justice, then you're fired. Because, I mean, that's, yeah. it, it, it could be how it was seen when you yeah, like, don't talk. Absolutely. I mean, it could be, it, it, I mean, it may not be obstruction, but it is an obstacle. So yeah. it may be something against their, you know, their ethics or, or whatever as a police officer. That may be why they, they were able to do it. I don't know. Yeah, because the smart thing would have been to, okay, I'm a police officer. I know the law. I know what can happen. I'm going to call an attorney and be like, my brother's being questioned. I need you to get up there mm -hmm. and retain an attorney for him. Not your dumbass call and tell him <laughs> stop talking. Hey, yeah. police officer, stop talking. I mean, are you trying to get fired? Like, what yeah, the hell? And the polygraph, they were like, "Oh, he passed it, so he's good." I've never heard that before. Mm -mm. Like, I mean, with polygraphs, it's like either okay, we can tell he's lying, or he managed to pass it somehow. Like that's that, and that's why I'd never do a polygraph because that's what yeah. it's for. I mean, yeah. so yeah. Well, yeah. the thing too is a polygraph. People do not understand. Like it does not test whether you're lying or not. It tests mm -hmm. for certain indicators of stress. Yeah. So you could be somebody like me with high anxiety and fail that thing and tell the complete truth. Like I'd be in there freaking out, thinking they're gonna. I'm going to jail for murder. You, You're like, ma'am, this is a jaywalking case. We're just, yeah. we're just want to know if you saw the guy. You would, you would fail the baseline questions. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what would happen. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, that's so true. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. So after this, and I, I don't, I don't know the exact date. I didn't have time to go back and look because, I mean, we found this out yesterday that that Brooks got arrested and we're doing this today and you know it's after three and i have a four so we're on the time crunch here <laughs> but at some point um the family's unhappy with it so they hire a private investigator and there had the, the private investigator says that he uncovers a crucial piece of evidence which is a white buick that's on the um brother's form so apparently they're thinking that maybe she was transported in the trunk of that car. So I don't know, maybe if they had dogs out there that mm -hmm. hit on the car or something, but then uh, grandma's like, get the F off my property and then sells the Buick. Nobody knows where it's at. <laughs> I mean, what? Yeah. It's crazy. Um, it says they, you know, issued a subpoena to compel her to appear in court. To, to ask about this Buick and uh, she never ended up testifying. So I don't know what the hell that's about. Did, did, I'm did like, she die? right. I'm like, I why, mean, why did you not make her come in there? Like, I, I mean, if she's like, if she's like, I'm going to, I'm a sovereign citizen. Fuck your subpoena. Like, I, I, <laughs> I mean, didn't know you could dodge a subpoena like that. Yeah. I'm not going to find out what granny did. Thing. Yeah. That's, I have no that's idea. wild. So there's more stuff that has gone on in Bardstown and, and it kind of is the same thing like you were saying with um, 
Morphew, Suzanne, that it's such a small place. I mean, I don't mm -hmm. think Bardstown is like this huge metropolis. So yeah. to have a ton of deaths within a certain period of time is kind of sketchy. So, you know, when people ask why the hell would he kill her? You know, we don't know because one, people say he was very controlling and there had been whispers of abuse. So, okay, you know, he's a douche. Maybe he lost his temper and killed her. But also, a lot of people are speculating that she found out something to do with a murder that happened prior to that. Yeah, because there's like, what? Was it, yeah. There was a bunch of people <laughs> murdered, right? Yes. Yeah. So, in 2013, Officer Jason Ellis was ambushed when he got out of his car to move some debris out of the road. So he gets out of his police car to move these debris and somebody kills him. Just out of the blue, random officer. Why? And, you know, there's all this, all these rumors going around Bardstown that the Hawks and some other people were involved in drugs and that people in the police department were involved because, you know, Nick was a police officer and that Jason Ellis found out and they were worried he was going to snitch on them. Mm -hmm. So they killed him. I don't know if that's true or not, but that is one of the, the things that people say could have been a reason for her to have been killed. Like, did Crystal overhear something? Did she overhear Brooks and Nick talking about having killed Jason or knowing about it or something. And then they, you know, got in a fight about that or they just were like, you know, we got to kill her because she knows and she's going to tell somebody. I don't know. Yeah, and, and you talk about drugs. Like I was just looking up where Bardstown is and it is pretty close to I-65, which is a huge drug oh, corridor. So, I mean, yeah. it, it wouldn't be shocking at all if there was meth all over that place. I mean, because right. that's, that's a big problem with, with that area is meth. So, I mean, it could very, I mean, drugs would make complete sense. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, then, so that's in 2013. Then in 2014, a mother and daughter are found murdered inside their home. Mm -hmm. It was insane. Like, she's a special needs teacher at Bardstown Elementary. Her daughter was 16. Yeah. Like, they weren't into anything sketchy. I mean, there's like no reason they would have been killed. So here's, you know, a year later, this crazy murder of a, of a mom and her child. Nobody yeah. knows why. So yeah. is it related? Is it not? Who knows? I mean, I don't know, but it does kind of make you wonder, you know, there's 2013 murder of the police officer. These two are dead in 14. Then her. Then in 2016, um, Tommy Ballard is killed, which is Crystal's father. So when she goes missing, her dad is like, hell no, I'm not having this. The police don't want to catch anybody or put Brooks behind bars. I'm going to figure this out. And from everything I've seen since, this man kept files. I mean, boxes of notebooks where he was mm. investigating, talking to people, writing notes, all this stuff. So he goes out one morning, it's still dark outside. And he goes out to some property that they own and he takes his 12 year old grandson and they're supposed to be going out there to hunt. And as they're getting out there, and I think they're somewhat close to the road, maybe not, I could be wrong about that, but he gets shot and killed out of nowhere. I mean, we know one another, Hunter. There's nobody else out there. It's just them. Yeah, and it would have oh, to be. Him. Yeah, and it would have to be somebody who knew they were going to be out there. Yeah. You know, and in a town, a town that small, Crystal goes missing, and then the person who is leading the charge to find her mm -hmm. ends up dying. I mean, it makes you wonder if you found something. Yeah, I mean, it does. Or the fact that he was getting close, like, yeah, you know, yeah. because they say that where the police have found stuff now is the property that he and Sherry were looking on when he was killed. Like, that's the same place they were looking. 
So it does make you think that they were on to something. Um, I'm trying to say exactly when they said, like, what they said. So in 2021, the FBI announced that they, quote, recovered an item of interest, end quote, while searching a subdivision in the same Kentucky town where the mother of five vanished. So it does say they took cadaver dogs out to search that subdivision. And by Tuesday, they began excavating at a home in the subdivision built by Brooks House. And they find an item of interest, but they don't tell anybody what it is. So, and they've sealed the indictment against him. So, well, I think they unsealed that, but they, I think the, uh, or maybe the arrest thing, something's been unsealed. I know because we read it saying the charges against him, but all the rest of the information is sealed. So we don't know what they found or, or anything. But my understanding is, is that where that subdivision is, is where the parents were looking, you know, thinking that might've been where he put her body. And now all of a sudden in 2021, they find something. But I do wonder what they found. Like, what did you find that it still took you two more years to arrest him? Because that was in 21. This is 23. Yeah, I, I guess maybe it was something small enough to point them in a direction, but not big enough for enough, you know, for yeah. to be enough evidence to arrest somebody. I don't know. They did say that... Um, between that and March of 22 is when human remains were found near Bardstown, which again, don't know if they were her or not, if they've ever even said. Um, I don't think they were, but I could be wrong. But after all this, there was like a resurgence of interest. And so they put out a reward and kind of makes you wonder if somebody didn't call and snitch after getting, seeing that reward out, because then all of a sudden this year, this Joseph Lawson gets, indicted and they indicted him not for murder for conspiracy to murder mm. and tampering with evidence so that tells you right there that he's not the only one that he conspired with somebody yeah and now we know for sure who because they've arrested brooks i mean and i'm sure the people in that in that town are like about time but oh, yeah. i mean you got to put a list i mean you got to make sure that you can you know, make the case before you make the arrest or else yeah. you end up with, you know, Barry Morphew. And right. Then you, and then you get sued. So I can see why it, it took a while, but mm -hmm. I mean, it does kind of, it, it does kind of make you think like there's going to be some, some serious movement on this. This guy gets arrested. And then right after that, the other dude gets arrested. Mm -hmm. So, and well, it, Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, and if the, the remains that they found, if they're not her, like, that's just another person that's been murdered out there? Right. I mean, like, wow. I can't even with these people. Like, don't move to Bardstown. Right? Say it's the hell away from Bardstown. Wow. wow. Like, you could die there easily. Um, I did quote what it says on, on Lawson's indictment. It says, agreed. So, I guess the conspiracy and all, the, the, the charges read that he agreed to aid one or more persons in the planning or commission of the crime or an attempt or solicitation to commit the crime when he and or a co-conspirator intentionally caused the death of another. Yeah, so, I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty cut and dry for conspiracy. And what I'm thinking is because of the tampering with evidence thing, I'm wonder, well, wondering if he's the one who took the car out there. Or help take yeah. the car out there. Yeah. And I mean, like, he like he just got arrested not too long ago. So, I mean, did he even have time to make a deal as to, like, giving somebody else up? I, mean, I don't know. But if if not, how'd they get Brooks all of a sudden? Yeah. I mean, if, if he didn't yeah, if he didn't make a deal before he, he said anything, I mean, that's a special kind of stupid. But either way, um, hopefully it's it's progress. I mean, he has a long rap sheet and it's like all kinds of violent, like domestic mm. violence, stuff like that. Yeah. But if you see him, I'm just saying, like, I don't want to stereotype, but dude looks like a crackhead. So <laughs> I can't imagine this being the guy that I call for help in a murder. But they never are. 
Yeah, they're, that's they're, true. They're, you know, that's true. And I mean, when you see some of these people, you're like, yeah, I mean, yeah, you could tell me he murdered somebody. It's bit, that's not going to show me. Like, it's more shocking if you told me he's never murdered somebody. Like some of these people, <laughs> well, you know, the way they look. So what's yeah. shocking to me is that like this is who you're trusting with this information, but at the same time, I guess like if they're not some kind of crazy crackhead, who can you just call in the middle of the night and be like, hey, killed somebody, yeah. need your help. I, I, I feel like if you have the kind of people in your life that you could trust with this kind of thing, you're probably not the type of person that does these types of things. Yeah. So, I mean, you got to go with who, who you got. I mean, True. So, yeah. Um, the only other thing I was going to say is, so I brought up the murder of the woman and her daughter. And I don't know if that has anything to do with it or not. If any of these murders is not connected, I would think it's this one. And it was pretty violent. So, um, that's probably something that I will write up so we can, yeah. you know, because I hate to bring something up and then be like, oh, but we're not going to tell you the story about it. So, um, and it, it's not always brought up because they're not sure it has anything to do with Crystal's death. So, but but it's um, unsolved. Unsolved. Yeah. So, unsolved. I mean, it, it, it deserves <laughs> as much attention as anything else. And my understanding is, um, I, I can't remember. I'm trying to remember. I cannot remember exactly how they were killed, but it was very brutal because I remember them saying that it looked personal. It looked yeah. like they were trying to hurt them. So it's so it's so sad. Yeah. Um, but that's all I got. Uh, yeah. I think his next day in court is October 5th. His arraignment is scheduled October 5th. And I believe the at the arraignment is when they will read everything so we should know more on the fifth yeah yeah and we'll we'll we'll, we'll stay up to date on this now we, we yeah. kind of slacked a little bit but we'll get better, get better yeah and don't come at me if you're like <laughs> wow she said this and that's not exactly how it went down i know i know but <laughs> chris was missing for a lot of damn time and i followed it the whole time and you know there's a lot of other cases so between Last night hearing about it and today with work and not waking up to 1130. Um, I had to like refresh my memory on some yeah. of these and they might not be exact. So, uh, yeah, like we got day jobs. That, that, yeah, we got day jobs where th those pay the bills. So we kind of have to prioritize that. Yeah. But, yeah. But we'll we'll definitely stay on top of this. So, yeah, speaking like of, I'm not straight up throwing, throwing crazy nonsense out there, but it might not be like the exact <laughs> timeline. So <laughs> right, yeah. don't come at me. And speaking of timeline, you got to go because you got work I to do. Oh, yeah. So, I got a clock in five minutes. Yep. So that's it for this episode. We've got several episodes written up for some unsolved cases that are out there. So we're going to be bringing those uh, to you guys. And then anything that we got on these current cases, we'll bring those to you as well. So like I said, comment out there and let us know what you think about both cases, uh, whether it's yeah. on YouTube comments or Instagram and X, formerly Twitter. Um, we're at Crime on Record. So let us know what you guys think. But that's it for today. We'll uh, see you guys real soon. Peace out. Wait, are you ready? <laughs> <laughs>